Good evening, everyone. Good evening. We are going to be discussing today how men determine your worth, ladies. Let me scoot the microphone a little bit closer. So I'm going to wait a little while for you guys to click that like button. And if you are new, yes, hit the subscribe button and the little bell for notifications. Thank you. Sprinkle, sprinkle. So it is, I guess it's close to F. No, it is evening time. So where I am anyway. I don't know where you guys all are, but it is evening here. So good evening. And if it's morning where you are, good morning. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, so we're going to be talking today about how men determine your worth, ladies. First and foremost, if you want to get a pen and paper, you definitely can, or you can just listen to the video. I didn't really write anything down, <laughs> but if you need something to write down your ideas and your schedule and all that kind of stuff, y'all get my luxury inspired notebook planners. Um, it is linked at the top of the live chat so y'all go ahead and get that uh oh jay boopsie of the house member she's a member sprinkle sprinkle good to see you y'all can become members too if you go to the channel page and click join and become a member there's different tiers and you guys get the little cute emojis as well that says level up and i think there's a floral one and another one I'm not sure. but yeah so how do they determine your worth okay well first of all it's how you present and carry yourself, ladies. Um, what they see, basically. What do they see when they see you out and about? What is your first impression? Right. This is why I say first impressions are definitely important. So what do you look like upon a first impression? What do you look like on a normal basis? How do you leave your house? What is your typical style? This is how most men will determine your worth as far as um, appeal. Okay. Uh, and this is why you have some men who don't care what you look like when you leave the house. Some men who will say, I don't like it when you wear makeup and wigs and, you know, this type of clothes. And then why some men don't even really notice if you change anything about yourself or not. It's, it's how you look and present yourself to the public. OK, so um, your worth is determined that way first, because, you know, that's what we first see when we look at people, their appearance. So a man determines your worth either high or low, depending on how you look in public. So, not how you look in private. I'll repeat that. How you look in public, how you will represent them, how you will look standing next to them, okay? Um, because we all know that what most women don't look like what they look like in public when they're all dressed up got their makeup and hair and, you know, everything looking nice versus how they look when they first wake up in the morning. They're not judging you and your worth is not determined by how you look in the morning. That's number one. So it's how you look standing next to them and how you quote unquote increase their value or, you know, the buzz about them, you know, how you look and how people turn their heads when you walk in as a couple. You know, that's what also determines your worth to men. Another thing that determines um, your worth to men is if you allow them to shine. Oh, Tess, sprinkle, sprinkle. How do we look better than their rich ex-wife? You just look better. Just look the best you can look. There's, it's not a competition. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> Um, and stop trying to compete. That's number one. You know, um, like just be the best looking version of yourself. Okay. Cause you're never, if you're continuously trying to compete with somebody to, to look like them or outlook them, you're not even going to look like you. So just stop trying to compete period and just do the best you can do for yourself. Because if you don't, then guess what? 
you're constantly walking in the footsteps of someone that they are no longer with. And that's kind of silly. So you don't want to do that. Um, so how you allow them to shine, which means um, how you compliment them. How do you allow them to look like they're all that? How do you allow them to make sure that everyone knows they're the man? You know what I'm saying? Without being Barbara the Builder, without helping. <laughs> How do you do that? Compliments. Don't really try to over talk them or correct them in a public setting. That also determines your worth to them, especially if they would like to take you out and introduce you to other people and present you as wife or, you know, girlfriend. So how you allow them to shine. That's another one. Another way men determine your worth is if you allow them to be themselves. That's, that's, that's another big one. If you allow them to be themselves, if they feel stressed around you and having to pretend that there's something that they're not, or always have to walk on eggshells and feel uncomfortable, you know, speaking their mind around you and things like that. That's not a good thing. And your value decreases if they feel like they can't be who they are either or let loose or whatever. So um, instead of always trying to correct someone or to improve them or to fix them, allow that to kind of dissipate. And if you don't like them as they are already, don't even bother dating them. So stop trying to fix them or um, improve them or suggest ways for them to improve themselves. If you're doing that, then you're dating the wrong person if you constantly have to tell them what to do better. If they're not doing that on their own, if they're not self-improving on their own and you constantly have to correct them, telling them to do this, do that, dress this way, then you're probably not going to last very long anyway. So just allow that relationship to run its course and fizzle because you shouldn't be doing that in a relationship, nor should they be doing that to you as a lady. Okay. So yes, when you don't have to correct them or try to improve them in some way, and they are feeling as if they can be themselves without worrying about you nagging or in fear of you not liking something that they said or, or did, then definitely um, that does increase your value as someone that they would want to be around. Okay. Yeah, y'all hit the like button. Sprinkle, sprinkle. If y'all like the info so far, click the like. Yay. Okay. So another way is complaining. If you don't complain a lot, that's a good thing because it doesn't mean you're low maintenance. It just means that there's nothing they're going to be able to do anyway to fix the issue. Um, and complaining just means you're simply not happy. You're simply not going to be satisfied or happy with whatever it is that they are doing, whatever the date is, whatever it is that y'all are trying to uh, experience that evening. It means that you're not going to be happy and you're hard to please and that they're constantly going to be hearing complaints for majority of the relationship. So especially in the beginning of the relationship, instead of looking for things to complain about, look for things that are, you know, something to compliment or be you know, thankful for, or, you know, just point out something positive versus the negative all the time, because that's going to get on their nerves eventually. And then when they associate, um, oh, I want to go out and have a good time and just have the best, you know, evening ever, who should I call? Your name's not going to pop up in their mind because you're steadily complaining. So don't be um, the type of woman that's always complaining because that definitely decreases your value to them in their eyes. Okay. Oh, BB Sprinkle Sprinkle. She says, you're 25. You're not noticing the men around you. You're noticing the men around you aren't married, mind, marriage minded. Those smaller, but nothing's permanent or long term. What? Where can I move? Um, depending on their age, they're not going to be marriage minded. Most men who are marriage minded are much older or have the money to actually support and provide for a family. So maybe you need to date older men or stop looking for marriage at such um, you know, a young age of men. Okay. 
sprinkle, sprinkle. And if you're looking for a man your age to marry, preferably in um, a culture or a place where uh, men wait for marriage to sleep with women. That's the best thing I could tell you because I don't know any other way. And if I did, I still probably wouldn't do it. Okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> I need experience, okay? Um, okay. The next thing that increases your value is if you are able to pretty much know how to run your own life without always depending and asking them to do like the menial things. Uh, like if you have basically common sense, okay? If you have common sense, your value increases so much and you don't even realize how many people do not have common sense. So if you have common sense, you're going way up there on <laughs> the chart. <laughs> Uh, okay, so please, common sense. That means think before you speak. That means think about things before asking dumb questions. That means being logical and making sure that you're not doing some dumb stuff because you didn't take the time to sit there and just think logically. So, yes, common sense is a major part of your value just like it is for a man especially like if you've ever dated a man who had basically no common sense you understand what i'm saying and so ladies have common sense um i don't even know maybe there's a book on common sense that you can buy somewhere <laughs> but yeah definitely increases your value to have good common sense okay that means not asking dumb, stupid questions all the time, unless it's strategically being asked for certain reasons, <laughs> but just not for no reason at all. Okay. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Uh oh, Samara, sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank you, girl. Um, what age are men you typically looking for something serious when they're old and they can't pull like they used to? Sprinkle, sprinkle. Like, I keep trying to tell y'all. I don't know why, like, y'all tr keep trying to get married to these youngsters when men are 10 years behind mentally anyway. You're married. If you're trying to marry somebody in their 20s, you're marrying a teenager. You're trying to marry somebody in their 30s, you're marrying somebody in their 20s mentally. So depends on what type of marriage do you want. You want a man who's responsible and can provide and not trying to chase after everything, anything with a pulse, or do you want you know, someone who may or may not make it home that evening, someone who may or may not answer their phone, someone who may be going out of town on boys trips every year. What kind of marriage do you want? That's all I'm saying. I would not be in a rush to get married to a young, a young man because I know how they are. I would be um, more likely to marry a little, someone a little bit older who's already, you know, been there and done that versus having to deal with that because that type of marriage is probably not going to be very happy so think about what you want <laughs> your mom never had to work and she always dated older okay that's what i'm talking about so another thing that also increases, increases your value is if you know how to date if all your exes or all the past people that you've dated are low class Crap, scum, dusty, scrub, whatever y'all want to call them, no good. Then your value is also determined by the exes you've dated. I'll repeat that, ladies. Now, if you if you are just leveling up and stop and you're trying to stop the habits of dating dusty, great. So um, the less dusties you date, the more your values increase. OK, if all you have behind you are a string of dusties and you meet some guy who's potential and, you know, they're at they're trying to see, you know, you don't have to tell them who you've dated. But if they know who you've dated or it's obvious who you've dated by how you're reacting to them and how you treat yourself, how you dress, the places you go, where you hang out and all those type of things. If it's obvious the type of men you've dated, then you're 
value is then going to be assessed and determined according to the man you use today. So you're going to have to um, really step out of that comfort zone and level up to where that part of you does not show anymore. So where a man can't even tell the type of man you use to date. It could be anybody, you know, but when you see a certain type of woman, you already know the type of man she probably dates just by how she looks. So you must level up to the point where people don't just look at you and automatically assume that you date a dusty. <laughs> okay. Um, so it could be your um, some of your value to men can be determined on the type of man you're used to date or the type of man you look like you used to date. So it's all it all goes together. OK. Um, you usually only date 40 plus the sweet spot for me. OK. Between 30 and 52. That's a good age. So, yes. First of all, it means you don't play around. You take your relationships and your life seriously and your dating life seriously when you date men who are about something. It also means you take yourself seriously. And so your your value goes up. You know? Um, they're not gonna uh they're not gonna see you as somebody to mess over real quick because you're used to it. They're gonna see you, oh, that's wifey material. Oh, you know, she, she probably used to dating these, you know, types of guys who can buy stuff, provide, and you know, have you know, nice car, nice home, just this, 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 that. So I have to be on my best behavior um, and make sure that I treat her accordingly. All right. So that's how you um, need to look, act, and come across if you don't want to be mistaken as only the type of women who date dusties. Now, another, another question that a lot of women ask me is, when I go out, how come men don't approach me? Do you look like you date dusties? And what that means is, if they saw you, would they expect a Dusty to be standing next to you, calling you babe? <laughs> what does this mean? What does this mean? Are you typical? Do you look like the typical woman a Dusty would date? Like, what do you look? What does your makeup look like? What does your hair look like? How long are your lashes? How long are the nails? You know. What type of spandex do you have on today? You know, just understand. <laughs> you know, what sneakers are you in today? How many animal prints are you wearing at the same time? This can determine the type of, of men that most people automatically think you date. Okay. So when you leave your house, think about that too. Like, dang, if I leave my house looking like this and I bump into someone who's a potential, you know, a person to date, what will they think I used to date according to how I leave my home? That's also what you need to keep in mind when you leave your house or when you get dressed up. You know, if you're going out and your lashes are hitting right way up here. It's not the look. <laughs> you said older white men don't marry young black women. Lie. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I, that's a lie because I've witnessed it. <laughs> it. Depends on the type of woman it is. I'm not, I'm not going to say it always happens or it never happens, but I have witnessed it several times. So I don't know what type of lie that was. B B B E. <laughs> um, yeah, if, if your eyelash ain't hitting up here when you blink, you might be okay. <sighs> All right. Maybe it, maybe it's just not in the stories or the people or the environment that you are currently a part of, but it does happen many, many, many other places. Okay. Mm hmm. You said you definitely need to be thin. Not in all cases. Depend on how old the man is. I, I had a friend that was not thin, who married an older um, Caucasian gentleman, 
He bought her a whole bar, made her a business owner, you know, overnight, bought her a house, BMW. So, and she, she was not thin. She was probably about as, I wouldn't say she was fat, but she was not thin. <laughs> so I guess it all depends. And he was also English. He was also an English gentleman. And she was American. So it just depends. Like, that's not always the case. There's, he did have some thick glasses, though. So, you know, I could get them ones with the cataracts and you'd be fine. Uh oh, Takesha Sprinkle Sprinkle, another member. Find the ones with the thick glasses, girl. The one with the little blue film over their eyes. <laughs> You'll be fine. Go ahead. Anyway. <laughs> Y'all know my little jokes will come out anyway, no matter how hard I try to be serious. So another thing is, like, it's nice to be thin. It's good to be thin. Your chances are probably going to have, you're probably going to have more of more options, definitely. But it's not all at all impossible because um, most of the people I, look, I'm, I'm in the South. I grew up in Texas. I'm in Texas. Most of the women that I know are not super thin or skinny and they all bag men with, with money or well, most of them anyway all right so i guess it also depends where you live mm -hmm. so if you live somewhere where everyone's thin and made of plastic that could be an issue if you uh, are trying to get some you know get someone at a thicker size. Um, but if you're somewhere where people like to eat, you're probably going to be better uh, at, you know, an average size or, you know, a little bit thicker. It just depends on where you are. That's another thing. Uh, if you're located in a place where everyone has a certain aesthetic, then and you got to follow that protocol to be considered, um, you know, available or wifey material, then that's that's the environment you live in. But if you live in a different type of environment where that's not the case, then, you know, your, your chances are better. That's all I'll say. What would I do if my daughter brought home a Dusty? Um, I wouldn't do anything because they wouldn't bring on home a Dusty. <laughs> Unless he was looking for a job, you know, uh, cutting the grass something I don't know but they wouldn't bring home a dust I don't think they would they would they would hide him <laughs> and there you go they would they would date him in private and nobody would know but he would sprinkle sprinkle okay Or they would introduce them only as a friend. Period. It's not impossible to get rich men fuller, but you'll get way more than you think. Yeah, that's true. You'll get more attention, definitely. Um, so, and, and I do say that, and also, like I said, it also depends on where you live. Because a lot of people run into issues like mid-relationship where the woman is thin and the man is like likes to go out to eat. I mean, sometimes a man wants an eating partner sometimes. <laughs> Not just someone that's always going to stay on a diet or worried about their weight or worried about how many calories they're consuming. After a while, men are going to be like, just eat, just order what you want. And that's how a lot of women gain that relationship weight. So you're going to have to also to keep that in mind. You can catch them when you stand, but eventually they're going to want you to order some real food. So um, think about that if you live, especially in the South. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Starve until you get married. Okay, so another thing that increases your value is your confidence. Okay. Y'all already know about the confidence because I make whole speeches about it. Your confident self, the level of your confidence determines the majority of your value. Well, yes, I said it, the majority. Because you can be all of the above 
and have low self-esteem and low self-confidence. And it will come off as insecurity and it will give the other person, you know, question about, you know, well, why doesn't she feel this way about herself? You know, um, what is it? What is she missing? She obviously does not feel like she's the best version of herself. Maybe there is something wrong. Maybe hmm, I need to pay closer attention so that I can see it too. But if your confidence level is on high, it tremendously increases your value, no matter what size you are. Okay, So um, it tremendously increases your value. You have belief in yourself, not just as far as looks, but as far as being able to get whatever you need and want in this world. That is huge a huge value increase. So knowing that walking, talking, and acting that way will definitely score you a lot of points in that department, okay? Um, mm-hmm. You said you need to take advice from Asians, Muslim, Russians, and Latino women when it comes to being with providers. You can take advice from whoever you like, but until they're, um, you know, and if you are not them, then you can't take, you shouldn't take advice from someone that you are not even close to being. <laughs> because a lot of them are taking advice from this channel. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> All right. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Sure is, yeah, I was reading one of their questions. You know, that's a troll. You don't want to say we're in the comments too public. Okay, yeah. you should be taking advice for anyone who's giving it to you and taking the time to share if you want it. Yes. Uh oh, Samira, sprinkle, sprinkle. You said money in all races. So you're saying we should take advice from mail order brides. When I get when when I used to do consultations, that's all I used to get calling me. Mail order bride. Sprinkle sprinkle. <laughs> uh oh, Samara, send me some money, girl. Sprinkle sprinkle. So yes. You said Shira is being a nurse, a dust magnet job. To me, uh ask a dusty. If you wanna know, go go to the storage, baby. Um, let's just say I wouldn't walk anywhere else except the medical facilities and scrubs. I wouldn't go out in them. You wouldn't see me outside of the medical facilities in any type of scrub because I don't want Dusty's, you know, um, thinking, you, you know, you finna take care of them. <laughs> I'd say take advice from any woman who doesn't deal with Dusty's exactly. So you say you say y'all are so corny with taking advice from other cultures. Check yourself first, right? You know, I'm not being rude or anything. I just feel like um the I think the epitome of like I, I guess I'm gonna be biased a little bit. I mean, since I am, you know, was since I am American. I'm going to be a little bit biased for American women when it comes to, you know, being um, the way we are. You know, we have very high levels of confidence and we don't care and we kind of stay unbothered, blah, 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 blah. And I think a lot of women can learn from that level of confidence, at least. So if anything, learn, learn on that level of confidence. Mm -hmm. I've I've had friends that are from different cultures and I've seen how they react around men. I see their fear around men. I see a lot of things that are different than how I react around men. And so I know that there's different ways that women act according to how they were raised and what cultures they were raised in. If I were to suggest something, they would look at me like I was crazy and be like, oh, we can't do that. Like, well, why not? 
will get disowned. Well, I will be disowning them first. <laughs> okay, like, and so, goodbye. Don't have to buy you a Christmas present. They ain't got to call you. Don't have to see you. Bye-bye. <laughs> so, you know, like, it's it's different, I guess, because I guess the family unit and their, and like, different cultures are very much different in their attitudes and things like that. Like, over here, we don't care. Look, see you when we see you. So, it's very different. Some women can't follow some of the advice that I give and some women can. And so I feel that if you can't follow the advice, at least take the confidence with you. Mm -hmm. There you go. Can you please do? Okay. Okay. So more things that increase your value okay your ability to get along and be peaceful with others such as their family or their friends even if it's fake your ability to you know not be a troublemaker or someone that cannot get along even if it's just to, to pretend and if you can get along pretty much with everybody and talk with everybody without you know, feeling some sort of way or feeling awkward or them feeling awkward, that's an added bonus and will definitely increase your value. If you're not intimidated being around certain types of people, whether they're um, of, you know, higher class or lower class, because you probably will be meeting different types of people depending on, you know, what type of business, whoever the guy's in, in, um, so you're going to have to be comfortable around different sorts of people and make it seem like it's not awkward at all. Um, this all comes naturally to those women. They've been raised to think like this since a kid. Yeah. Where can a woman over 60 look for a mate? Lubies. Sprinkle, sprinkle. If a man has a good paying job, he can still be bad with me. That's true. And when I say lubies, I, t I tell all women to go look at lubies if they're trying to find an older man. <laughs> you ever get lubies in the nice area? Sprinkle, sprinkle. Denny's in the morning. The, the IHOP. The grocery store in the morning. Cause like, I, I often see older people shopping in the morning time. It's safer. They wake up at 4 o'clock in the morning anyway. And there's less people to bother them. You said Piccadilly. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like a loopies. How do I feel about military men, vitamin, veterans? As long as they're doing something else with that military edu free education and earning some extra money that is higher than what the military men earn, I'm good. Sprunk, sprunk. <laughs> Everybody got to start somewhere. <laughs> anyway. Somebody said bingo. <laughs> said what is lubies? Girl, lubies is like where all the old people go eat. <laughs> it's like a cafeteria that has the jello and the the Salisbury steak and the, the fried fish filet with the mashed potatoes and the unseasoned cabbage. You know, lubies. I don't know. Maybe you'll have a similar restaurant. Um, some. <laughs> mm -hmm. Your 80 something year old grandma met her multimillionaire in a bingo club. Wow. That would be a great book to write. I met my man when I was 80. A bingo. <laughs> When he yelled bingo, I knew he was the one. <laughs> you said it's so hard for you to date being vegan. Why? Girl, I've been vegan for years. And you can pretty much find food everywhere now. It's, it's Now it's normal, mostly. A lot of people have vegan options on their menu. Um, you're, yeah. Okay, another thing that increases your value is your environment. What are you what is your apartment or home or wherever you're living look like? Is it a, you know, is it messy? Is it, you know, is there 
Like, the rodents everywhere? Like what? Does it look like you care about the environment or at least for the most part, especially if you're busy? So also like how you upkeep your environment. Another another way to increase your value if like they don't really know you is manners. Even if you gotta fake them tribes. Please thank you, listening, letting them finish their sentence, smiling, and just being very courteous allows your, you know, um, value to increase just like that. And I always make it a habit of saying thank you, please, and, you know, trying to finish, allowing someone to finish their sentence and smiling and trying to keep up with what they're saying. Um, manners, um, such as those, especially when you're first meeting or speaking to someone, is going to go a long way. Um, now, I don't know, a lot of women are not are going to agree with this, but the less you curse, the less you use foul language, you know, the, the, I think the better you get treated. And I also feel like your value increases as a quote unquote lady, like lady. So the less foul language you use, the better smoking and drink, like especially if you smoke cigarettes or vaping and stuff like that, you know, bad habits decrease your value. So try to get rid of some of those bad habits, or at least don't do them in public around whoever it is that you're dating or whatnot. And if they do it too, it still increases your value if you don't. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you said people think you're weak when you say please and thank you. Only if you live in a certain type of area where they would think that like that's just regular manners. You know what I'm saying? If people think you're weak, if you say that, you're, I don't know where you live. <laughs> you're, don't, don't invite me. Um, if, if people think you're weak for saying please and thank you, I don't know where you grew up, but tell me so I don't ever go over there. <laughs> okay. It could just be environment. Like it could be uh, where you were raised. I don't know. Like maybe you said shade, but it's true. I can't even imagine feeling weaker for saying thank you and please. Not begging, but just being courteous. Like if someone opens the door for you, thank you. And like if someone um, says something to you and you say, may I please, you know, da 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 da. So if, I don't know, I've never been in a situation where saying please and thank you were something bad. I don't know. <laughs> thank goodness. I don't know. You said hood mentality. I don't know. If, I think it's also because I live in the South and a lot of people say please and thank you automatically. Like it's just natural. So it could be also that. You said, say please and thank you and treat staff with respect. Yeah. Um, it is a natural instinct where I am from. I don't know. I, if you if you are from a part of the world where it is, you know, not good manners to say please and thank you, then do whatever you've been doing. Okay. You said always let the man order for you on a date. Um, I don't. I don't a hundred percent agree with that unless you ask them to, because they're going to order everything wrong for me and they're going to waste their money. <laughs> so, you know, me, me and a lot of people do not have the same type of taste in food, but like if you don't care and you're pretty much open minded and will eat whatever someone orders you, that is a nice gesture. But if you are a picky Order your own food, ladies, or you will waste their money and they will be even more offended. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Say, so wish your girls are about to graduate. Were you thinking about getting some gifts? A 17 year old is a good age for a new car. Girl, 17 for a new car. Does she already have a car? I got my first car when I was 15. I don't know. Like, I feel I'm, I was a little bit spoiled as, as a teenager. So, I mean, as a graduation gift, that's nice. But I would, I was already driving in high school. So, um, yes, definitely get them something nice. <laughs> I mean, unless you want them getting rides and Ubers everywhere. Okay. One of my old, one of your old sugar dads used to always order your food. You hated it, but didn't have the heart to tell him to stop. <laughs> oh, he was probably an old school girl. Mm-hmm. What do I? What do you think of plastic surgery post weight loss? I mean, if you like, if you need plastic surgery, get it, baby. Or if you like, if you want it. I think it it just depends on what your goals are in life. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. One, okay. So another thing to increase your value is your ability to occupy your time in a productive manner especially um if you if you don't work or if you have a hobby or some spare time what you do in that spare time especially if you're uh, you know letting people know also increases your value as a as a as a woman girlfriend person whatever so um if it's something creative that's good if it's something like nice for the community that's good as long as it's not something that decreases your value then you're good, you know, as long as it's something that people can be proud of and mention when, you know, um, you're in a conversation and, you know, people ask you, oh, what do you like to do for fun? What are your hobbies? If you say something crazy like, um, I don't even know any crazy hobbies anymore, but uh, <laughs> if you say something crazy, they're going to be like, huh? So even if you have to make it up, or lying, don't don't tell people that you know you do some stuff that may seem negative to them because that's going to decrease your value. Or if you're you know going places that are not you know making you look the best, uh, perhaps just say, oh, well, I just um, paint or draw or make cookies or something. I don't know, child. Just make it up. <laughs> What about being a mom with a daughter in show business? Um, I don't know. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> I wouldn't know because I'm, I'm not a daughter of a mother who's in show business. How can you convince your wife's niece to get an abortion? She's carrying your child and you don't want her ruining your life. Oh, don't you know it's illegal now? You're going to have to come up with that child support. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Uh oh, Jay Boopsie. Y'all, y'all heard Dusty? Sprinkle, sprinkle. I don't know. Y'all might have to make a trip to Cali. <laughs> sprinkle, sprinkle. Y'all need to keep up with the news, I guess. I don't know. Get your money, whoever that is. On the other side of that question. <laughs> How do you feel about really long nails? Um, I'm, the question always pops in my mind, how do you wipe your booty? And I know it pops in men's minds too. So if, I'm like, if you don't have them really long nails, just understand that people are asking that in their mind when they see them. <laughs> and they will not be asking you to make them no sandwich, no food, which is a good thing. But still, <laughs> they will wonder if you have a nail brush. I just don't, I think that's just one of the questions that automatically pop up in people's heads. So 
If you don't want, if you feel uncomfortable with people asking themselves that questions when you go like this, then maybe shorten them a little bit more. All right. And y'all have to know another thing. Like if you if you follow trend too much, it also lowers your value. If you're always on the latest trend, doing whatever the latest trend is, it lowers your value. Um, because it kind of tells people that you don't really have a style or a mind of your own, that all you follow is what's the latest trend because you're always trying to keep up with the next type of, you know, thing. So if you're always following the latest trend, if you everything that you do is on trend, if, if I can scroll through Instagram and see everything you got on, um, then that's not really going to increase your value as a lady. So just know that. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, like maybe for like special occasions or if you just want to experience having the long nails, maybe just get the press on nails that you can take off when you're done with them and having that experience because I've had them. Um, and that's super long though. But as long as you can pop them off, I think it's fine. <laughs> if they on there to stay, you making nail appointments and, and, and stuff like that, and we got issues. <laughs> Don't do that. And you know, especially if you're dating old or like older guys, the long nails are not classy to them. As much as it is to, you know, maybe someone else that may be younger. All right. You said baby hairs. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I think, like I said, common sense goes a long way. And if you're trying to level up and, get, you know, date a classier type of man, um, you know, maybe like hold off on the baby hairs. Yes. Sparkle, sparkle. Mm -hmm. If you're dating, whoever you're dating, if they're, I said they're under, if they're 30 and under, you can do all the baby hairs you want, baby. Go, go, go crazy with the baby hairs if your man is under 30. <laughs> Have fun. But I think once you start getting up there in age, you know, Especially if you're dating older guys, don't do all that. How do you ask him for things like gifts or flowers so that he's inspired to do it? You don't ask. You just look like the type of woman that receives gifts and flowers. You know, mention how much you love flowers and um, compliment other ladies on what they have and how they smell so good. And you know, they'll gift you whatever it is that you're. Um, seeing on other women or whatever flowers you're admiring. Just speak and be vocal. Oh, I love your bracelet. So beautiful. Oh, I love those flowers over there. Roses or gardenias or whatever the flowers are. Those are my favorite flowers. They smell so good. Talk, baby, talk. Don't ask. If they're paying attention and they're trying to impress you, they will be they will be making mental notes about what it is you like. Or if there's a birthday or a holiday coming up, they're gonna ask you what you want. But you don't have to tell them what you want. You mention things in conversation. You make little comments. Oh, I love her. If you say person, it's, it's too much of a giveaway because it sounds like you're just a gold digging person that's out for purses. It's better to compliment earrings, scarves jewelry because purses are going to obviously be a next item that you're going to need eventually so start off with jewelry perfume scarves the smaller accessories and then work your way up because i mean jewelry is going to be expensive anyway but it's not so obvious <laughs> Mm-hmm. How do you say, what do you say to ask? You know, okay, question. You know, I say to ask for 
bill, but what if they say, okay, give me that info, they'll pay. <sighs> then tell them you're going to email them a list of all your expenses for the month. And that's how you get on direct deposit. They're not, they don't have to specifically pay your exact bill. You can just give them a list of expenses and they just can give you that amount of money every month so that you yourself can pay your own bills. That's just a figure of speech. So, I mean, you could bring all your bills and take a, a Sharpie and, you know, X out all the uh, private information that you don't want. Or you can just make a nice list of expenses and email it to them. This is how much I need every month to pay my bills. That's it. Um, and it also increases your value when you know what you want instead of trying to figure out how to say this and how to get this and how to do this. If you already enter a relationship or dating and you already know what you're, want, what you're wanting and you treat yourself as if you deserve it and all that kind of thing, it's going to increase your value because you're not, they're not going to be guessing at, at a certain point anymore. They're going to know, look, she's this type of woman. This is what she expects. This is what she wants. And these are her standards and her boundaries. Not a lot of guesswork. Either I can swing it or I can't. So you're saving people time and energy is also going to increase your value instead of always like trying to figure out, you know, different ways to ask for gifts when, like I said, a lot of times you need to just talk. It, it needs to come out in regular everyday conversation. Everything is not an interview. Sometimes you need to just put out whatever it is that you are wanting, the information you're wanting them to know, and just regular polite conversation. Skipping the whole interview process of the dating game. You know. Men do not determine whether you deserve something or not. Exactly. You do. That's why you are always going to, to act, walk, talk like you know you deserve whatever. Whatever it is that you know you deserve. Okay. There you go. If a man hasn't contacted you in a month, is it a bad sign for you? If you're still, honestly, and I think that if you're single and you don't have any other options and you're still looking for someone to contact you who hasn't contacted you, perhaps find another option or occupy yourself with someone else. And if they should contact you, great. If they don't, you, you still got someone else. You know what I'm saying? Um, or you're not waiting on that. So. Just make sure you're not the only one in that scenario. Make sure you got back up, baby. Uh, this is half more than one, darling. What if the guy asked to see a copy of your fake bills? Then get to that printer, baby. Get to that computer and make you some... They're not going to be fake bills. You're just going to say they're behind. I don't know. Or make up some PayPal bills. I don't know. Don't you have a PayPal account? People send PayPal invoices all the time. <laughs> send one to yourself. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <clears throat> it's like common sense. I don't know if that's common sense or if that's just clever thinking. To me, clever thinking and common sense kind of go together. You fell off track about level up. You need to get with the program again. Okay. Another thing that increases your value is how you act around, especially other women. Now, a lot of women mess up right here. If you are introduced to another woman or if you're in a room pro, uh, full of attractive women, how do you conduct yourself? How do you handle yourself? Is your self-esteem still there? Are you giving side eyes? Do you seem jealous if another woman talks to the man that you're dating with? Um, how you react to certain situations is also going to determine, you know, how valuable you are. So remember that. 
play cool, be nice. There's not those are not your competitors. You have no competition. As long as you think like that, you're fine. If if they can see it in your face, you're losing points. It's showing your insecurity, so don't do it. You said aka your fake large dogs. Girl, do you know how many receipts for kennels there are online? I swear I need to just write a book on common sense. <laughs> Y'all grew up with the internet. Y'all grew up with the internet. Think about this before the internet was available, what we had to do. We had to wait somebody dropped a receipt on the ground, dig for receipts in the garbage or that was floating in the parking lot. Y'all got the internet. People take screenshots, pictures, and just post it up there for no reason at all. Okay? Google, baby, Google. Typical vet bill for three large dogs. Oh, there it is. Screenshot click. <laughs> it's very easy. Like, y'all got the internet. I shouldn't have to explain this. When go back to the old days when you had to um, wait in the parking lot and see somebody drop a, a receipt. Go back to those days. <laughs> I I would laugh so hard when I used to see people outside of Walmart. You know what they were doing? They weren't going in. They they weren't going to their car. They were sitting there watching people throw stuff in the trash or seeing if any receipts fall. Because back then, they just take the receipt, go in and find the item, and they try to exchange it for the money or exchange it for something else. Back in the old days, that's what people did until they got them serial numbers straight. <laughs> or, you know, they would use it on their tax write-off or their business write-off. They would just go find receipts and be like, write this off. Or, you know, take it to their boss, pretend like they spent this expense and didn't even buy nothing. A lot of people um, don't know how easy they have it because of the Internet. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Mm -hmm. You said you hate your ex most days. Why you, why you hate your ex? He was with the really wrong person then. Okay. Such a timeless beauty. Oh, sprinkle, sprinkle. I appreciate that. How long do you ignore a man and he doesn't come through or give money like he said he would? Um, if you have to ask that question, you are already waiting too long, baby. I'll just put that up. If you have, if you're asking that question, is just move on. You're done. Yeah, move on. Uh, okay, another thing that increases your value to a man who promises you things, and you have to sit and wait to deliver. Your expectations of whatever it is, say. They're basically standards and boundaries. Basically, your standards and boundaries. Look, um, when you speak to someone, it's like, oh, I really, I really don't respond to promises and you know things like that. I, I'm, I refer, you know, um, my type of hmm, reaction to action. I like men who are action oriented. If you're going to do something, I don't want you to tell me or talk about it all the time. I'm not ever going to mention it again. If you mentioned it, if you don't do it, you don't do it. And then I know what type of person you are. I like action goal oriented men. That's a turn on to me. If you say it like that, you ain't never have to ask for nothing. That's all you got to do. Be very vocal. Set your standards and your boundaries straight up. That increases your value because they're, they're going to know better than to promise you stuff and never deliver. Have you waiting and texting and calling all the time and trying to be patient? No, it's like every second that goes by that they don't do it, that said that they were going to do, you're losing points as a dude, as a man. You're, you're losing points. 
your chances are decreasing each second. So that's how you have to be. Like, you know what? I, well, what type of man do you like? I like an action oriented, goal oriented man who says what, who does what he says without a woman having to ask twice. That's what I like. It turns me on when a man is a go getter and knows exactly what he wants, does exactly what he says he's going to do, and um, is a man of action. That's what I like. Done. You already just told him what you like, and if he can't deliver, he'll disappear. You'll never have to worry about it again. Um, and don't worry about hurting their feelings. They ask you the question, and it's not about what they like. It's what you like. And they should be proud to even want to even pretend or fake being that type of man to keep you and impress you, even if they're not. They might make them a better person in the long run. Just by your standards and boundaries. That's why you increase their value just like your value increases for having those standards and boundaries. So now all of a sudden, before, you know, they may not have followed through with a lot of things that they usually talk about. But since they're with a woman like you and they like you and you like the type of man who follow through, they may become a man who follows through and a man of action and things like that. Just because they think that you feel like they're the type of man that can do that which boosts their self-esteem and makes them a better better person for just dealing with you. So your value increases, their value increases, you get what you want, they become a better person. Done deal. So have, have that in mind when a man asks, what type of man are you looking for? Well, what are you looking for? That's the perfect answer to that. And say it nicely in, in a feminine way. You don't have to say it with the attitude or anything. So, oh, I really like men who are very action oriented. One that, you know, says exactly what he is going to do and does it. Um, men who don't waste a lot of time and, you know, they are good listeners and, you know, they pay close attention. So, you know, um, no one has to repeat themselves several times or feel like they're playing the waiting game or anything like that. Those type of men really turn me on because they know what they want and they're a man of action and a man of their word. That means don't say anything unless you can deliver, period. Um, and that you're not going to respond to false promises. You're only going to respond to action. Okay. That's all you're going to respond to is action. Nothing else. I'm not talking to you on the phone for five minutes or 10 minutes a day unless whatever um, you said you were going to do is done. Here you go. Okay. Um, Miss BBE or Mr. BBE, I don't know what you are. Uh, you need to go find some business, baby. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> yes. Men right. Right men are supposed to be problem solvers. Okay. If no one's... Yes. But thank you for the donation, Sprinkle Sprinkle. This dude was supposed to give the money almost two weeks ago. Now he keeps texting me, updating on five. Just block him, girl. Sprinkle Sprinkle. What are you doing? Block or even if you don't block them, just don't respond. That's that's me. I'm not responding until I see the money in the account. That's it. Just stop responding, girl. Let them text nobody. <laughs> okay. Yes. I told her don't respond until he sends it. Okay, exactly. That's, I mean, like long time ago that would that's that's the norm a long time ago back in the early night back in the early 2000s late 90s women did not respond to men unless that money was in that account or he was meeting you with the cash in the hand in the envelope to put in your purse we would we didn't play that back in the old days not if you ain't coming with this money uh-huh What's a better job for a leveled up woman? Volunteer work. (laughs) 
You said part-time receptionist? I don't know. <sighs> I haven't worked in a long time, so I couldn't tell you. I own my own business. All right. Your grandma said men had to pay bills to go on a date with. This was in the 40s. Exactly. They had to do something. They was just getting past the Great Depression. They had to do something. <laughs> mm hmm Be a receptionist in a nice area. Exactly. I said part-time, not full-time. No women were different. No women were different and black women did not play. Every comedian set was about black women didn't do a bit, had it to come with it. What? What black women didn't do in bed had it come with it. Well honestly, a lot of people were raised in the old days with religion. And a lot of things that people were um, saying not to do in bed um, was probably just how they were raised. I don't know. People can get as freaky as they want now or do as less as they want. It don't matter because when you get married, you ain't going to get none of that stuff anyway. <laughs> so, uh, don't even matter. Okay. <laughs> Jokes on them once they put that ring on it. <laughs> you recommend a consult with a lawyer because the idea you have were more harmful to you than being called a dead beat. Oh. Y'all know he just playing, right? It's just the dusty in the comments. <laughs> playing. You don't have to take them seriously. Mm -hmm. You see, I have learned the art of delusion. Um, it's not delusions. It's just my reality. <laughs> That's what they said to people who said, oh, well, we'll be able to talk to people on screens online from far distances in the future. Oh, you're delusional. That's who got paid the most, the people who have the biggest delusions. They get the most money because they have the best ideas. So, the best way of seeing things and the best realities that they're creating. So, maybe you could learn from delusional people. Okay. You're not playing also what's a dusty? You, sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, go look in the mirror. I don't know what to tell you. You said you feel like you're too old to be a receptionist? Girl, there's old receptionists everywhere. I don't know what to tell you. Like, what is your goal? Is, that, or is your goal a career? If you're career minded, own your own business. You know, start a, start a business. I couldn't tell you where to work because I wouldn't know where to work, baby. I'm. It, <laughs> I have no idea. Okay. You said Jesus died for all your sins? For real? Where you read that at? I should write a clapback book. <laughs> a lot of these women are focused on attracting men who need them to work. Oh, no. Mm -mm. I'm a, a part-time volunteer, and I will not be spending any money, so... Is there such thing as a classy tattoo? Yeah, the one your husband pays for after y'all are married. <laughs> it just depends on where it is, I think. Like, if it's not somewhere where everybody's going to see it when you're wearing normal clothes. I don't know. It just depends on what it is. Who knows? And where you're from and who you're dating and what their family thinks and what culture you are. It, it has so many things it depends on. 
Your husband trying to make you jealous, says the lady said she was next. If we divorce, I told him men are also waiting. <laughs> Girl, what kind of woman is that? You know, she ain't cute if she had to say all of that. I wouldn't even be offended. I'd be like, well, what she look like? Because I know she's ugly if she's over there telling you stuff like that. <laughs> Like, what type of woman is going to sit there and tell a married man he next after we get divorced? Somebody ugly? I'm like, just that alone would just let me know what type of person this was and that I would have nothing to worry about. Especially if he had the courage to tell me that, which means she's definitely not a threat because he told me. Now, if he had to told you, she probably wouldn't even said it like that in those words. And if you would have kept it a secret, then you might have had something to worry about. But since he told you exactly what she said, she was ugly. <laughs> okay. So maybe he just felt like it was a compliment. He wanted to share that, you know, he still got it, but he don't want whatever it was offered. I think older couples do that all the time. I do that all the time. Um... Like, guess what, James? This dude came on to me in the grocery store in the parking lot. Like, if it was, you know, if they was worth talking to, I wouldn't talk. <laughs> you wouldn't even know. But, you know, it's just fun. What kind? Someone texted you the ultimate insult and get a job. <laughs> So, if someone texts me that, I would be so upset. I'd be like, oh, you're right. Where your mama work at? <laughs> I was like, where, where does your mother work? Maybe I can get a job with her. When asked, what do you do for a living? What do we say? Work? Volunteer? Part-time receptionist? I don't like to talk about work. Especially if you, if you don't work, then just say, oh, I volunteer a lot. Best city and state for young single black women? Um, I don't know, like, Wherever you are, I feel like, honestly, I feel like if you can't get a man or a date wherever you are, you can't, you're not going to be able to do it anywhere else. I mean, just practice. Like, there is no right or wrong answer, but thank you for the donation. I, I just feel like if, if you can't get a man in your own little small town or large town, then how are you going to go somewhere else and get one? You know, I think it's just your confidence level and how you carry yourself. It's not it's not going to change if you go somewhere else. You're still going to be the same person. Can you you should be able to pull wherever you at. Period. You know. And the only reason to to switch locations is for better options with more money. Mhm. Mm <laughs> Say you work at a male urologist office. <laughs> Y'all silly. Y'all are silly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dental assistant. Okay. Aren't the picking slim? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Like you can't pull, then you can't pull. It don't matter where you are. Believe me. We got 10K today, so you thought you'd give, oh, sprinkle, sprinkle, a little something to say thank you. Love forever you are changing lives. Oh, sprinkle, sprinkle, girl, get your money, girl. You got it from a sugar daddy who gave it to you, girl. Better keep him, sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> yeah. 
if y'all there's like a little dollar sign thing i guess in some areas you can't send but i do have cash app so if you want to send me something by cash app okay. um congrats on your money girl sprinkle sprinkle mm -hmm. i i like hearing y'all's success stories and y'all getting y'all's money um, so another way to increase your value is to not seem desperate or needy. A lot of women don't realize that they're coming off desperate or needy sometimes. So kind of pay close attention to some of the words you're using in conversation, texts, how often you're calling, texting, or each other and things like that, and how busy you're staying and how available you are. Oh, Tanya, sprinkle, sprinkle. Would you move in with a man before the ring? Dating almost two years now, 46. You're 27. Girl, hey, yeah. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I'm moving in, picking out the ring, and not paying no bills. Sprinkle, sprinkle. That, that's just me, though. Doesn't mean I'm going to do any chores, pay any bills. I'm the guest of honor as usual, and that's it. Does this apply to husbands too? They, yeah, it applies to husbands. If they want some or if they think they got another chance to get some, yes. <laughs> How can you motivate your husband to make more money? Make more bills. Sprinkle, sprinkle. And tell him he needs more money. You need to level up. You need no inspiration like more bills. How, do, how does a single woman make more money when her bills increase? Same thing. Go get it. <laughs> you wouldn't move in before marriage because why buy the cow and it's too hard to find my place okay well I moved in I got two rings I didn't have to clean or cook I got a house too and a car so I guess it just depends on you, you as an individual and the type of man that you're with you know what I'm saying so I'm going by my experience and I feel that, you know, my confidence level <laughs> had a lot to do with that. Okay. Because I already knew what I was worth. I knew my value. I knew what I wanted. I said what I wanted. And that was that, you know, it, it, like I said, you have to have some standards and boundaries. So it just depends on who you are and who you're with. Like I already knew, like I'm, if I move in, great. I don't have to waste gas money driving. We don't have to waste gas money driving. I don't have to pay the bills. I can get more. <laughs> I can get a promise ring or an engagement ring and a wedding ring. I, I'm going to have two rings. Um, you know, for me, I just knew what I wanted and I did not think traditionally. I thought like me. You know, I'm going to get what I want anyway. So my, why did, I might as well do what I want. So I did not feel like by following a traditional path of waiting to get the ring before you move in or waiting for marriage and stuff like that. Um, especially in my generation, in my day and age, I may have lost out on that entire opportunity if I had gone by the rules. So I knew what I wanted. I made the standards. I knew that... I was very convincing and can get whatever I want. So I did. <laughs> so if you're not with the type of man who you know will give you whatever you want and do whatever you want and you can't convince him, then of course, keep your power in whatever way it is that you can keep it. So if not moving in is your power, then that's your power. But I had power and I lived there. <laughs> so either way, just assess the situation and get what, what you can get. Mm -hmm. 
Y'all need to start. Y'all need to learn. Y'all need to go watch all my old videos. Like whenever there's an argument, a fight, if he mess up, it's time to go to the store. It's time to go to the jewelry store. It's time to get that promise ring. It's time to get that diamond. It's time to get that whatever. Y'all be letting people get away with stuff without paying for it. Literally, that's that's a lot of the issues that women face today. They let men get away with stuff without paying. You got to pay for forgiveness over here. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Y'all be letting people get away with stuff. You, you you treating me bad for two days? You giving me the silent treatment for two days? Well, guess what? Um, you're taking me out somewhere nice or you're going to buy me something nice if you want me to ever talk to you again. Okay. Are you going to make some grand nice gesture? Because I'm not free. Ever. My attention ain't free. My forgiveness is not free. It, <laughs> so... Y'all, y'all be playing like y'all be playing house and I'm not, I'm not, I'm playing like get this money, get this ring, get this house, get this car. Y'all are playing <laughs> pretend. If when a man messes up, he must pay. Period. That's it. Money. If you let him get away with it, he gonna keep messing up because it's free. <laughs> Is it okay to propose to a first date on a, if she pays for dinner? If you homeless, of course. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <sighs> Car tire if you homeless. Sounds like a good idea. All right. <laughs> You said you got it so true. You got in it with your 72 year old potential. And when you reconciled, you made him pay your fake tuition and up your allowance by 1K. Okay, see, I told you. You said you love your boyfriend, but he's so depressed and unambitious. And I feel like a bad person if I leave him because of his brokenness I'm attracted to make good money okay so here's my thing you're attracted to a broke depressed unambitious man what does that say about you forget him for a second what does that say about you <laughs> what's attractive about a broke depressed Unambitious man. I'm just, did he look good or something? Because you can find a man who ain't broke, depressed, or unambitious who also look good. Just put the mirror back on yourself. What does that say about you? You think you can't get any better? Why do you feel bad for leaving someone who's broke, unambitious, and depressed? Maybe if you leave him, he'll get up and do something. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Don't enable him. Unless he's getting a check for being broke, depressed, and unambitious, I'm not sticking around, baby. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Tell him he better get on that government checklist if he's trying to be all of that. At least he can get a check for it. If he ain't even getting a check, then he is super unambitious. Can't even fill out no paperwork. Uh uh, bye. <laughs> You said, I'm sorry. I just, I'm not going to deal with that. Life is already, honestly, if that's, if you're, if you're with a man and he feels like that and you his woman, what does that say about you? <laughs> so you're in a relationship with a man. He feels this type of way with you. If you left, maybe it would change and it would be better for both of y'all. Just, just say, you know what? Being with me, making you depressed, blame it on him, girl. Being with me is making you depressed, unambitious, and I don't want to do this to you anymore. So for your safety and your health, I'm going to leave because I think it's me that's causing you to act this way. I love you, but I can't sit around and watch you turn into this person because of me. Girl, blame yourself and be out. <laughs> <laughs> C 
Call me when you're feeling better. Every day it just feels so bad because I feel like it's my fault. Okay. Shira, is it okay to talk to our husband about our business and passive income goals? Uh, yeah, when he's asleep and can't hear you. Sure, go all out. Go have fun. <laughs> you wait till he's snoring, though, okay? There you go. Um, <laughs> I don't suggest it. I just suggest giving the least amount of information. That way, when something happens, he's not going to be like this. Oh, you're making all this money. Mm -mm -mm. You don't know. He said, your boyfriend pays all the bills, but he doesn't do oral. You're stuck on leaving or staying. Girl, <laughs> tell him if you don't, somebody else will sprinkle, sprinkle. I'll be honest. If that's what you want, I don't know. Or just go get it somewhere else and don't tell him. Who knows? <laughs> and you said boyfriend, not husband, so it don't even matter. Y'all ain't married. <laughs> Yeah, have your bill paid and go get that elsewhere, baby. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Mm -hmm. I don't know what to tell you, but, you know, don't give him none unless he give you some. Don't cut him off. Y'all, women, y'all's body is y'all's weapon too, okay? If he don't go down, then he don't get none. That's what you got to tell him. Mm-mm, mm-mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> you know what you just, what? I'm sorry. There's, there's only one way you're going to get that. You already know what you got to do. If you don't do it, bye. Y'all are so silly. How do I tell your brother? GPE 41, tell him however you feel like it, baby. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I don't know what to tell you. Tell him in dusty language, you know, the language you're fluent in. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Sure, your fiance knows how much money you make. He doesn't use it against me, but how can I reverse this discovering you? Tell him you all you lost it. Make it disappear in his mind. Give it away. Do something with it, but you'll still really have it. You know what I'm saying? But get rid of it out of his memory. Oh, I gave it to my mom. They needed to borrow money. Oh, I lost it in some type of thing. Or, oh, you know, I spent it. Or my, my somebody needed to borrow it. Or I gave it to him, and now it's no longer there. Just get rid of it. <laughs> but really still keep it. Just get rid of it in his mind, and you're good. Okay. Put on a good act, too. Maybe you'll even get more since he thinks you have nothing or very much less than you had before. You're <laughs> then don't tell him your business anymore. There you go. Another thing that increases your value is your mystery. <laughs> I know that sounds weird, but the more someone knows about you, the less intrigued they are with you, the less they feel like they have to get to know you or want to spend time with you or anxious to see you and learn more about you. So the less they know and the more mysterious you are, especially in the beginning, the more your value is. Because if, if you are comparing 
um, you like if he's comparing you to another woman who blah 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 talking 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 tell everybody life story on the first date, then he's gonna say, okay, well I already know everything about her. She's boring, not interesting. I don't see us having much in common by all the crap she didn't told me. But this person who I went on a date with, you know, she was very mysterious and I don't know that much about her. I want to know more. She's very intriguing. She didn't talk all night. She just kind of listened and enjoyed the ambiance and she smelled really good. And she said something um, that was very interesting, but I want to talk to her more about some, you know, something else. So not being blah, 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 blah all night and staying a little bit more mysterious and sultry will definitely increase your value as someone who, you know, has, you know, their attention. Mm -hmm. What kind of things make a woman mysterious and what are some interesting hobbies, conversation topics to use on dates to keep him intrigued? Stuff that's not normal. <laughs> or don't tell them. For example, if someone's like, so what are your hobbies? And you're like, you really want to know? I don't tell people my hobbies that I just met. That means another date is probably going to be in the works and he's going to be more intrigued of whatever your hobbies are. He's going to think something, wow, her hobbies must be some crazy stuff. And then like when it gets to that time to say that the hobby, just say, don't even answer the question. Just ask them how they feel about something. How do you feel about <laughs> latex <laughs> or something just weird? Just say, how do you feel about <laughs> you know and you like they have to pull stuff out of you but not serious stuff you know like then quickly change the subject like I really like this shirt you're wearing tonight and start feeling the fabric this feels nice <laughs> it can be weird and intriguing at the same time y'all gotta have y'all gotta be creative like in this world because that's different. You stand out. You're not like the, the blah, 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 interviewer. You're not like the person telling their life story and giving you a full a full interview type date. You're just, you're different. You're not the typical, you know. There you go. So just stuff like that. Just how can I just not be boring and blah? What is going to get his attention? What is going to make him think like, wow. Stuff like that. How do you feel about John Barker ball game? No, don't go that. That's too much detail. Just, God. just ask him if he likes, what's his favorite candy? Like, what, do you like the jawbreaker? <laughs> do you like jawbreaker? Don't, don't give too much detail. Too much detail is going to ruin it. You just, that's up to his own imagination. Then you can clean it up later. Like, oh, I make candy. <laughs> <laughs> or, oh. I fix shoes. I don't know. Who, who knows? Okay. How would you respond to creepy men online? I usually just block them, but kind of want to get creative. Be even creepier. Hmm. <laughs> if you just want to mess with them, just get, just get stupid creepy. Like, you know what? I have a I have a green sock hidden somewhere in my house. If you can guess what it is, I'll do whatever you request. 
and just leave them on. Don't ever read their responses. They're going to be texting you all under the, under the sofa. Then be like, oh, you know what? I don't have green socks. Never mind. Miss <laughs> hmm? Widom, girl. They be like, How do you get him to do simple things or just do QD? What? Cut law? If Here's the thing. If a man wants to impress you, he will. You If you have to force him and do all that kind of, he don't want you. Baby. He don't want you. And so it's better to stop wasting both of y'all's time and let that go and allow someone who's ready and eager to impress you to step in, darling. Okay. You said men are way too bold nowadays. Should you move in with him if he asks or should you wait for the ring? If he's paying all bills, if you ain't got to work no more, you have a savings, you can pretty much start your own business online if you want, and you're just living that beautiful life of leisure by living with him, you're going to get the ring anyway because he's investing too much. Especially if you don't work, he's giving you money, you're not paying no bills. After that first fight, Act like don't give him none no more. Be stay mad at him until you get a ring. That's how you get the ring. That's the makeup gift, the ring. It doesn't have to be an engagement ring. It just needs to be diamonds. Then you put it on your engagement finger. Or when you all are buying the ring, you're like, is this an engagement ring? <laughs> and even if it's not, you still have a ring. You still have diamonds. You still have something of value. You know what I'm saying? Um, and plus I'm not getting ready to say I do to somebody, tell everybody we get married. If I don't even know how they live in their house, their gross habits, you know, I need to know all of this before I say I do. I need to know how, if you leave socks and dirty underwear on the ground, I need to know if you are able to clean up out yourself because I'm not going to do it. I need to know all these questions before I even consider marrying somebody. I need to know if you pay bills on time, if you're going to pay my bills, how are you going to let me shop? I need to know all of this before I say I do. I need a ring before you even get engaged to me. I need a promise ring, a engagement ring, wedding ring. I need all of that. I'm like, that's just my mentality. I don't, I'm not traditional. I need to see what you're doing, how you want to take my attitude, what I expect and all this kind of stuff before I say I do. While I'm living rent free and not having to work. Or, you know, work. That's me. I'm not trying to be like, oh, you know, uh, no, I can't live with you until we're married. I'm going to live with you and I'm going to see how you're going to treat me, how good you provide, how much money you're going to let me spend, how much I can get out of you, what type of ring I'm going to get after this first big fight. I'm going to do all of that and I'm going to have it. I'm not, I'm not going to take my chances and sit there and wait while he invites other women over while you're sitting at home going like this. I'm going to get it all in one fell swoop. That's how you got to do it. <laughs> get it all in one fell swoop. Don't be, don't be sitting there waiting because why are you waiting? He inviting other people over. <laughs> Right. Please tell me why men insist on telling me that you're cocky for simply acknowledging that I'm attractive. Because you're dealing with the wrong man. Um, you're supposed to pretend like you don't know you look good. <laughs> I mean, you could say thank you, or I try, or I know. 
depending on how long you've known them, I know is a good answer if you've known them a little bit while a little bit. Thank you is an answer if they're a stranger. And I try is you know if you know them socially. Honestly, like if you know you look good, they know you receive a thousand compliments and they just want to add to that thousand. So just say, oh thanks. You said men say they want confident women, but will tell confident women to lower their standards. That's why I'm like, I take my compliments in cash, baby. <laughs> Mm-hmm. If you're more cute than sexy, how do you mean it work? Anybody could be sexy. That's just that's easy. What's the first big fight script? Whichever one occurs naturally and you just make it worse than what it really is. Make it affect you worse than what it really should. Like, oh, you hurt my feelings. I don't know if I can forgive you. Oh. Just take something a little bit too personal and allow them to make it up to you, even if it never bothered you in the first place. Oh, Jessica, sprinkle, sprinkle. Your mother-in-law want to move with us? Nope. She's She wants to be closer to our kids. She needs a man. She would have her own private space, bedroom, kitchen. And she, girl, bye. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> I ain't living with no other mother. I'm sorry. Um, honestly, unless y'all have a garage apartment or um, a guest house, the answer is going to be no. Unless you're trying to be somebody made and cooking and cleaning, honestly, no. You're not living in my house. Um, unless you are definitely like homeless and stuff, and it's temporary. Then uh, your son need to figure out how to get you your own apartment or build a garage apartment or a tiny house in the back. But that's about it. <laughs> okay, tiny house time. Mm mm. Unless she's going to be helping y'all and being basically the nanny, I don't really think it's a good idea because she, she's going to be in all y'all business. Oh, yeah, it's me. Sprinkle, sprinkle. What about a super generous man who adores you but has very small package? He wants marriage and is a super provider and amazing person. Otherwise, girl, after y'all get married, y'all ain't going to be doing that much anyway. So, yeah, go get your money. Sprinkle, sprinkle. All right. That honeymoon phase is going to be gone better sooner than later. And you, all you can do is just shop that match. Match your outfit, what shoes are going to get. You know. <laughs> in law is not going to get off your back. Exactly. Don't, don't move them in unless they're nice and, you know, will help you. Otherwise, I'm not. You said you don't know about y'all, but I would actually want to be besties with his mother. It just depends on whatever it is, the situation. Some people don't like their mother-in-laws. Some people love their mother-in-law. So whatever your situation is, remember that no matter what, if they're going to live there, you're going to have to also think about when there's an issue or a problem. Are they going to butt in with, with things that are not their business? Are they going to try to tell you how to raise your own kids? I mean, you got to think about these type of things. Are they going to agree with everything or disagree with everything? So we just need to know. Um, because I, I think like no one really thinks about those sort of things until it's too late. So just think about it. What if she tried to tell you, oh, you're doing this wrong. You should raise your children like this instead. And blah, 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 and it's something that you're totally against. Then that's where the big problem is going to occur.
And and how are y'all gonna have to tone down y'all's lifestyle? Or if she doesn't agree with something that you're doing, or you can't dress like you want to all the time, or you know, it's gonna be a little bit of an inconvenience. How to get a man to spend your or buy things but was du- duped in the past? But girl, if they tell you they was duped in the past, move on. Real men don't tell women this unless they don't want. Unless they want you not to ask for anything. It's a setup. They're What they're telling you is don't ask me for nothing. If a, a real man would not tell you that because he would save his pride. He wouldn't tell you that. He's telling you that to make you uncomfortable asking him for anything. So My response would be, wow, you're such... A bold man for telling me that, you know, some girl, you know, made you fall for her so hard that she could get all that stuff out of you. Like, most men would never do that. Makes them appear weak. You're so sensitive. Now he feel weak. Now he got a man up and buy you something. And you must have taken it taken it really hard, especially if you feel like you lost something. You may, um, you know, maybe... It, Financially, I don't know if you've recovered from that yet. <laughs> Reverse psychology. I'm sorry, I don't know. I didn't even think about like, did you financially recover from it? <gasps> well, I'm so sorry that happened to you. Now you're just seeing him as weak and a victim. You see? So a real man wouldn't tell you if some woman got over on him. He would just move on and forget about it. That's a setup. You know how many dudes say that? So just just drag it out and make it painful. Oh, I'm so sorry. Have you financially covered recover? How much did she get you for? Wow. And you just gave and gave. How sweet. She must have really like had you in the palm of her hand. She pretty. <laughs> okay, Jessica, he says, haha, we think a detached garage is okay. She wants to babysit. I told her she can't walk into our home because we're going to be naked. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess if there's a different part of the house, and I guess that's okay, but you know, who cares? I don't know. I need I need my space. I, I need to be far away. <laughs> I'm not that social anyway, so it wouldn't matter. But it would be nice to have help. So if you need the help, that's great. You see, that's exactly what they do to program you. Exactly. You reprogram them. Did you? Oh, my goodness. Have you financially recovered? How much did she get you for? Oh, my gosh. She must have been very smart. And savvy. Because I think you're very intelligent. And I don't know how a woman can get over on you like that. She, she must have had you eating out of the palm of her hand. So therefore you just weakened him. Make him look like. He, you know. Basically you emasculate him. Now he has to prove himself to you by. Oh yes I financially recovered. You know I'll do something for the right woman. And. You know, I'll, that's why I'll take you out and buy you whatever you want and take you somewhere to eat nice. And I just, you know, I just wanted to t- let you know that you know, that did happen to me. And, well, that's a shame. It makes it hard for other girls, you know, to date and not have men do the basic things that men, you know, are supposed to do while dating. <laughs> mm, I, I can't. Imagine having to date someone who's paranoid over every little penny. You know, they have counseling for that, for P- PTSD. You know, thinking every woman's going to do the same to you. Maybe you should go seek help first. <laughs> Let me know when you, you know, when you're all better. Bye. Okay.
Um, so, you know, I, I don't know. I think I made a whole video on that. When they tell you they've been hurt, it's a setup. I've been duped. I've been hurt. It means don't ask me for no money. And I ain't finna commit to you. That's all that means. All right. On the first date, you are going to ask about his mama. If she is alive, he gets crossed off my list. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Y'all are pretty fierce. Um, has anyone tried? What? Okay. Y'all are asking for beauty tips and things like that? Y'all, y'all need to, like, start making lists of all the stuff that they say to kind of deter you from asking for money and y'all need to come up with comebacks to reverse the situation just like i told y'all so it's kind of like you know those annoying sales people that have a rebuttal for every time you say no i don't know what they call it in sales but y'all need to come up with some of those as women okay rebuttals like to get them back on track like, oh, you were hurt in the past. I'm so sorry. She must have been very special and beautiful, you know, um, for you to even admit that. You must not be over her yet. That means you ain't even going to get none. You ain't going to be close to getting none because you still worried about this other chick. Oh, oh, I'm over her. I just, you know, I just don't want to rush into anything else. Oh, don't worry. We won't rush anything. You know what I'm saying? We ain't going to rush nothing. Oh, well, this lady got me for my money in the past and I don't trust women and I just don't freely give money. Oh, how much did she get away with and have you financially recovered? Oh, that's so, did you report her to the authorities? Oh my goodness. So are you able to, are you still able to afford to date? Well, that's unfortunate. Well, okay, I'll order from the lunch menu, or maybe I'll just order a couple of sides. That is a shame. I don't have, I don't have the side salad in a glass of water. He said, how do you convince a pick me to change to gold? Lead by example, darling. And don't like, you know, when you try to force someone to do something, they rebel against it even more. Just act like it's something that you don't think she's ready for. Act like something that you don't think she can do. Y'all got to really use a little bit of reverse psychology on people who don't want to automatically jump on board. You're just like, oh, no, I don't know if you're able to do that. You know, it takes a lot of preparation. Um, trick them into a girl. It took me hours to get ready, like literally. It's kind of expensive to, you know, to be leveled up. And, you know, I don't, you know, the places that I hang out and meet people, you know, the drinks and are kind of expensive and there's only valley parking. And I'm not sure if that's your, you know, style. Just make it seem like it's too extra for her and she'll be trying to do it too. <laughs> All right. Uh oh, James Tippins talking about Jesus. Yes. Are you in one of those rehab programs where y'all gotta hand out flyers on the street? Sprinkle, sprinkle. Y'all can do it online now. Good for y'all. All right. Y'all know them, them dudes on rehab that get out on the street with the church and hand out them purple flyers? Y'all get credit for doing it online too? How long have you been sober, sir? Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. <laughs> All 
I'm, I'm so glad you sober though. Okay, keep it sober. Sprinkle, sprinkle. All right. You know what I'm saying? I think we should date as many guys as we can until we find someone we really like, but only guys that we like or interested in. That's what I did for Michael. Until I found somebody who's going to pay all them bills. Mm -hmm. Where did he go? He got his credit left. Oh, man, yes. You heard a woman earlier say bring money just be in case the man can't cover the dinner. I heard you in my ear saying bring no purse and embarrass the hell out of him. Yep. That's the users like call uh, y'all. I have whole videos on that. I'm like call your ex. Oh my gosh. I'm on a date right now and this dude did not bring any money. Are you near such and such street? Yeah, I forgot my purse or I didn't bring my credit card or my wallet. I have no cash. Yeah, he can't pay the bill. I know. I'm sorry. You're right. I'll make it up to you. Are you on your way? Okay. Bye. Oh my gosh, my ex is going to come and bring me some money. <laughs> so sweet. He still loves me. We gotta wait for him. <laughs> he said he wants to meet you. All right. How do you embarrass them, hurt their ego? They do it to us all the time. Ask the waiter. Excuse me, waiter. He can't pay. And I forgot my wallet. I had no idea because this is our first date. What's the protocol for this? <laughs> Do you need my driver's license or something? Or his driver's license since he's the one that invited me? Because I had no idea. Could you get the manager, please? Okay, I have a situation. He doesn't have enough money. This is our first date. Has this ever happened? <laughs> As loud as you can for those who can't hear in the back. Or excuse yourself to the bar and start drinking with other people. <laughs> Make a quick friend. Oh, I was on a date with that guy, but he couldn't pay, so I left. How are you? You look nice. I love this material. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Is it a trick to get you into a relationship when he says what his ex is now married to someone else? That his ex is now married to someone else. No, it seems like he's trying to keep up with that and what she, she's doing. So now he's trying to do the same thing. Um, honestly, ask about her ring. So she got it. So she got married after you. She's married. Well, you know that's great. She must. This must have been some ring. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So anyway, another thing that makes you valuable is how you deal with negative situations and negative people, including them. Oh, sometimes people want to provoke you to act a certain way and especially, you know, be bothered. And when you remain unbothered, it's like, dang, she doesn't play. I can't, I can't really mess with her or do anything because it doesn't affect her. She'll just move on or 
Don't care. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm so silly. So anyway, if y'all have any questions, I'll get ready to go. I'll answer a few more. Why do you seem to get the ick for most men after a short amount of time? The ick? Oh, you mean you don't like them after a short amount of time? Because they're not what you want. I think back in the like in the back of your mind, you might think you want that, but you don't. So you got to figure out what type of man you really want. What's, what's, what are your priorities in a relationship? Not what I'm telling you, not what you think they should be, but what are they really? And just try to find that in a man who just has money for you to spend on you, okay? And you'll probably be better off. Sometimes you're settling or changing the things that you really find important in a man because of YouTube or something like that. So find what you really think is important in a man. Just make sure he got money so he can support and provide and protect. Okay. Like you might like a man who's smart or you might like a man who's a whole intelligent conversation. You might not look all of that or he might not be typical or have all this, you know, swag or whatever, but it, or he might just he might be looking for somebody who's a little bit strange or Somebody who has more in common with you. and But make sure that you just have money. Don't always look for the complete, you know, basic package. Look for stuff that you like individually. Mm-hmm. You got my eyeliner, girl? Sprinkle, sprinkle. Appreciate you. <laughs> sparkle, sparkle, y'all like my lipstick. This is a mix of my let me turn it up. This is a mix of my number 13 and a lip liner. It's kind of coming off because I was eating earlier. But um, yeah, y'all go ahead and get my just type in red vial. On level up cosmetics.us. Y'all go hit the um, link at the top and just type in the search bar of level up cosmetics red vial lipstick, red vial pendant, and y'all can get a beautiful red lipstick. Actually, I don't want to open this one because mine is in the, uh, the other room. But it stays on all day, and I've had this on all day. <laughs> so I've eaten, gone, run errands, come back, drank some water and coffee this morning. So we're good. And it's very luxurious. You should get it. You can also put it on a necklace, and it's also a weapon. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. I'll go get that. Also, um, if y'all like these, the link is at the top for all my stationery, pens, journals, planners. And on the website, just type in what you're looking for and it should pop up. So if you're just looking for lipsticks, type in lipstick. All my lipsticks will appear and just kind of use it like a search because sometimes you're not going to be able to view every product that I have unless you specifically type in because there's a lot of products. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. How do I deal with men who like drama? Make fake drama? <laughs> I mean, if you can control and orchestrate the fake drama that doesn't affect you negatively at all and he just likes it and it turns him on, then why not? <laughs> you say a role play with his dramatic behind? Exactly. 
get your acting skills on, girl. When he walks through the door, just start some drama. I can't believe you. What'd I do? What'd I do? You know what you did. No, I don't. Don't sit there and act like you don't know what you did and you know what you did. You be sitting there all cute and sexy in your outfit. I don't know what I did. Don't play with me. I'm going to need you to apologize right now. In fact, give me your credit card. I'm, I'm going to need you to order me something online as an apology because your words are not going to be enough this time. What did I do? You're going to be getting all excited and thrilled. Do you really want to know? <laughs> if you like drama, give him some girl. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Throw something at him like <laughs> this unbreakable. Have some props to throw. <laughs> All right. Drama kink is fine, but not verbally abusive language. Okay, yeah, you just keep it nice. Just throw throw and miss on purpose, you know. <laughs> All right, have fun with it. Don't just don't break out into laughter because then he's gonna know it's fake and then the delusion will be ruined. <laughs> All these young married couples, the husband always stares at me. Of course. I don't know why y'all think when a man get married, that's it. He can't his eyeballs don't work no more. That's a lie. His eyeballs, his mouth, everybody part on him still work. <laughs> okay, he still is a man. Mm hmm. I guess the husband is a cheapskate and he loves cheap stuff on sale, even groceries. <laughs> Then find something that you really like on sale and tell him that's what you want. And if he gets it down, he can save this much money because this is what you're going to want for Christmas, birthday, Mother's Day, next Christmas, next birthday, next Mother's Day. And so he'll more likely jump on it now because of inflation plus it's on sale and you'll get what you want. Got to speak his language. <laughs> He said, how can one be a B or mean while also charismatic, fun, and appealing? I was well-respected in my mean era. Softening has only led to mishaps. Help. <laughs> um, be nice when they're nice. And when you don't get your way, then be mean. I mean, you'll have a logical explanation for us to wipe me. They're not going to expect you to be nice when something isn't going correct. <laughs> you said, but Chanel is never on sale. Okay. Well, if you want Chanel, then, and it's never on sale, just say they've reduced the price. He won't know. How does he know? I mean, if he knew, then I'd be worried. But how does he know? Just tell him how much it used to be and how much it is now. Just like, you know what? This bag used to be like $2,000 more or $3,000 more. And now they've just listed the price at this price. This is the lowest it's been and probably ever going to be. And I'm afraid it's going to go back up during the holiday season. And so... 
they don't really announce their sales. They just go in and change prices a little bit sometimes. And if you're just really savvy and can you know the price of things, you can get a really good deal. He's not going to know. He's just going to say, okay, really? Yeah, because I'm going to ask her this on my birthday, Christmas, Mother's Day. And it's probably going to be more expensive if we don't hop on this now because I'm not sure how long this is going to stay this price. They must have, you know a surplus of product or maybe a return item or something. I don't know, but this is a really good deal. Get it. I'm telling you, I know Chanel, baby. Become an expert. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there any way to tell a guy if a guy is sleeping with someone, yeah. If you're not trying to sleep with you, bring a smile. Mm hmm Your best candidate is short and skinny. Should I still marry him for the rest? He's amazing and best provider if he's not a tr attractive to love as well. Think about in 10 years from now, if you do marry someone attractive in 10 years from now, they may not be attractive and then they might not have as much money or do what you want them to do. At least you know what you're getting. Short, skinny, with money. Okay, He can always gain weight. <laughs> and if he's that confident to date you and he's short, then you know he's going to keep making money. Makes him look richer, which means he got to stay rich. Okay, spread sprinkle. Okay. Shira, has your views changed in regards of online dating? Um, I don't know. I like. I feel like people online treat you like different than when they meet you in person when you meet someone in person i think it's much better mm -hmm. like because if, if you're meeting people online and you're just scrolling you're just one of the bunch but to catch someone's eye to sit and have a conversation face to face to meet someone for real for real the chemistry's there they're not doing this they're not comparing you to the person that it was to the left or to the right or you know whatever whatever you are getting to shine in your full self so I, I if that's the only way you can meet people or if you're just looking for free food and drink great meet people online I don't care but I feel like meeting people in person is definitely much better more genuine and the chemistry is better you might not get to see everything online those pictures could be old People could be looking at stuff from a different angle. And then when you meet in person, it's not the same person or look like y'all could be catfished and all that kind of stuff. But in person, you get what you get. And they can spend money right then and there. <laughs> okay. Money gets spent, be spent automatically right then and there. You don't have to wait. <laughs> And they also get to see how other people react to you, like other men, how they're looking at you, how men are looking at, you know, how beautiful you are and how many people are looking at him talking to you and how many people are envious of him in the room because he's speaking to you. So, yes, meeting in person is way better. If Y'all y'all keep meeting online. Y'all going to continuously get compared to the next chick that he was looking at on the profile before you. And it's not going to be anything. I mean, people can meet like that all the time. People can meet on social media, da, 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 da. but how many other people are they meeting online as well? I don't know. I mean, just as a woman, you, you, you wake up and your DMs got people in that you don't even know. It's like, okay. But when you're out and about and someone's genuinely attracted to you or they really want to get to know you, they make a real effort and they spend real money and they use real you know, um, chemistry. They're not asking you the stupid same copy and paste question that they're asking the next year. So it's very different. 
Mm-hmm. You said you ordered a notebook but got wrong color. How to exchange? Tell me which color you want. And I'll, and tell me your name on the order, and I'll just make the adjustment. Okay, because now that I'm sitting here, because I won't be able, I won't catch it if you don't tell me now. Okay, so tell me now. Mm hmm. You met your boyfriend on too. I know I'm saying you can meet people online, but I said I prefer in person. Okay. Mm -hmm. What does it mean when they call you intimidating? Okay, you want the brown and pink? You got the brown and red? Okay. I got you. I hope, I hope you just ordered today because I already sent out all the other packages. Like I'm starting scrap from scratch today. So I hope you didn't order already, like yesterday or the day before, because all those orders are gone. Okay. But if you just ordered today, then I can fix it. Gotcha. Um. <laughs> You're welcome. What does it mean when he doesn't show interest in sleeping with you anymore? I mean, he's sleeping with somebody else, sprinkle, sprinkle, or he tired of the same old moves and is bored and has passed the honeymoon phase. <laughs> Could he's fine it somewhere else or with himself. I don't know, child. If he's old and his Viagra prescription ran, I don't know. Um, whichever one applies. If a man uses your name in conversation a lot, what does it mean? I don't know. If they're saying positive things, it means that they like you. You're, they think about you often. What to expect of your boyfriend now that we've turned a year together? What to expect from him in this new year together? Um, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe. What should he be expecting from you? More bills? Is he paying them bills, girl? Sparkle, sparkle. You should be expecting him to pay more bills. Take you better places. Upgrade whatever you got. Better gifts for your birthday. It's been a year. You should be getting better. Better dinners, better gifts, better dates. <laughs> mm-hmm. You said you already got it. What? If you ordered the wrong color by accident and you just realized that, I'm not sure if I'm going to have the inventory to replace it. So, I don't know. I only order a specific amount, so I might not have inventory to replace it if you already ordered it so i'm not sure i don't know if it was a mistake on my half on my side or your side but um if you send it back to that address and i get it back just write a letter and tell me and i'll, I'll try and see if i got it because i sell out i sold out a lot, a lot of those really quick Someone says, just buy another journal and gift the other. Yeah, I mean, the holidays are going to be here in a little couple of months. Can you always gift it? Um, I 
Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I answered most of these questions. Been following for months now. I'm a few. Oh, sprinkle, sprinkle. Women who claim they intimidate men come off annoying to them. Hmm. What do men mean when they call you intimidating? Okay. It means you're too much. You're too masculine, baby. They can't handle you. They want you to tone it down. You're too much. I don't feel like a man around. That's what they feel like. They don't feel like they're a man around you because you're too much. They need someone who's a little bit less or calm or more feminine that makes them feel more masculine. Sometimes it's just a man who has not lived up to what you would fit best with. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes if it's just your beauty or your level up or how much, you know, how, how maintenance you are, it means they can't, they can't do anything for you. If it's, you know, if you're very outspoken or smart or just too much in the personality department, it means they can't keep up with your personality and your demeanor. If um, they want you to lower your standards and tone it down so that they, they don't have to work as hard to impress you, they're going to always say, oh, you're intimidating so you can dial it back a notch. So my response would be, oh, I get, a, I get that a lot. Most men can't handle me. <laughs> um, you know, and that will just make him feel like he's got to compete. So, you know, I get that a lot. Most men can't handle me. And pause. Like, I'm not, I'm not dialing it back unless you're worth it, you know. <laughs> like, you haven't shown me this far. I don't think you have the type of car that I like. I don't think you can afford the type of house that I want to live in. I don't think you can even pay my bill. So I'll, I should intimidate you. <laughs> you know? So I'm sorry I'm intimidating. It just, it is who I am. <laughs> you try to hook up with your pig Misha cousin who doesn't exist. But you know what? I get that so much. I, you know what? I know I'm, I'm an intimidating type of woman. It takes a special type of man to be with me. Believe me. No love lost. But, you know, I, I have a cousin that I think that you would get along with so much. Not, you know, so much better. And she's not very intimidating at all. Um, let me give you her number. Try to pawn him off to your cousin. He's like, well, what is she? He's going to ask what she look like. If he if he asks what she look like, give him the number to some weak this is what you need, like a fake number on file to some weird place. <laughs> Give them the number to some sewer company. I don't know. But <laughs> if he take the number, he deserves it. The petting zoo. Oh my gosh, that is hilarious. Yeah, give him the number to a petting zoo. <laughs> or the zoo. <laughs> <laughs> you said the work. <laughs> y'all are gonna be laughing at y'all selves if y'all do this stuff. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I gave you the number to the zoo. <laughs> but he said yes. He was asking me for another woman's number because I was too intimidating, so I gave him the number to the zoo. <laughs> You'll be laughing for us. Years afterwards. Um, so y'all keep the number to the zoo, to the morgue in your phone. And when somebody acting stupid, you know what to do. Okay. Can I be plain looking and still have standards for a provider? You're 20. Girl, you're 20. You look however you want. Old man can't see. They have blind anyway. As long as if you keep if you twenty, depending on how old they are, they probably won't care how you look if you're twenty. But you know if if they like to hang out, if they look decent, they might want you to look a certain way too. I don't know, depending on their taste and things like that. So, 
I don't know what plane is. I mean, I, I mean, I do know what plane is, but I don't know how plain you're saying. Like, do you not do anything to yourself? But just comb your hair, brush your teeth. Like, I don't know how plain plain is to some people. <laughs> Because, like, you know, a lot of men are very competitive and they may want to date and invite you out to meet their friends and their friends, girlfriends may look a certain way. And if you are playing and stuff like that, people, they're, you know, especially if you're young, but if you're old, they don't care. As long as you're young and tender. <laughs> you said playing is a bank, blank canvas. You can be anything. Exactly. I think plain and classic is probably better. You don't have to do too much. You don't have glamorous makeup and you don't have wealthy clothing. I cover up and wear clothes that match. Okay, well, they, that's their job to buy you that. So work with what you got. And they'll level you up if they like you. Or if you got good game. You know, go thrift shopping. You can buy makeup at the Dollar Tree, pretty much. Okay. You say you a young tender spring chicken. Mm-hmm. Sure, you want... Your university teacher, do you? Why do y'all keep going after these teachers? He would. Do you think he would date me and provide for me, even though he is my teacher? I'm very beautiful, and I think he wants me to. Okay, look up the average salary of whatever type of professor that is at that university. Look up his salary first. And then you might change your mind. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> Average salary to university of such and such professor, uh, the math teacher or whatever. You're going to be mad. <laughs> okay. Can teachers and doctors stop being so fine? <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I mean, they're just there for you for you to get up and go to class. That's your motivation, baby. Okay, when you get up and go to class, because your teacher keep great. That's not who you end up with, baby. That's just your incentive to get up and go to class. <laughs> okay. And when your grades start dipping, that's your incentive. Then you try to get a date, okay? Mm -hmm. You said some of these professors and quack doctors so fine, they work out well. That's how you know they broke. Sprinkle, sprinkle. And in debt. <laughs> they trying to find Barbara and get some from their students on the side or their patients. Mm -mm. Okay. This did all their wise work. I'm sure they do. Honestly, uh, that's your incentive to get the class and dress cute. Let me see that. I, ever, I had a crush on some of my professors, but they was like a little too. And some students. And some bosses. Baby. I had crushes on everybody. That doesn't mean I acted on them. All right, y'all. I'm, I'm getting ready to go, y'all. Stop trying to seduce that teacher and let him be. Let him seduce you. That way, at least you know he'll spend. You 
said there's whole channels teaching men to look good so they don't have to spend on women. <laughs> Here's my thing. If you look good, I'm bypassing. If you look too good, I'm super bypassing. You too sus for me. Like if you look good, men and women are gonna be looking at you, and I, I don't need all of that drama in my life. Okay, if you look so, if you look that good, well, men are looking at you and checking you out. I don't want you. Okay, if you if you look good enough for the LGBTQ to to, to turn their head, I don't want you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 the level that you have to be on, not to turn any heads in the community, the, the LGBTQ community, whatever. If you turn heads over there, I don't want you. And no offense, that means you look too good. You work out, you got muscles in the right place, you got a muscle right here, a muscle right here. I don't want you. Okay. <laughs> Okay. You see, like you're fat, black, and pink. If you ain't got a roll, a jiggle, a little pouch somewhere, I don't want you. Why do dudes act like they all have this money, but yet don't spend a dime? Because it's called an act. Sprinkle, sprinkle. It's an act. Thank you, Shira. Your advice really makes me see my sense to my situation. Oh, sprinkle, sprinkle. Only one room for one cute person in my relationship, and that's me. Okay. I mean, he can look good, but he can't look too good. You know what I'm saying? Can't look better than you. That's all. What's your thoughts on approaching guys? Uh, it just depends on the situation. If you approach them, um, it needs to be an approach to where they know they have to do the real approach. It's like a fake approach. It's, you do the fake approach. You ask dumb questions. And then they have to come with the real approach. Otherwise, I don't recommend it. <laughs> I feel bad for those couples where he is prettier than her. Me too. Your ex used to call you a gold digger, but he was broke. I must need a new occupation. <laughs> you got, okay. You feel like if his wife is average and he is good looking, he is in the closet? I don't know. Or, or is she paying him bills? <laughs> Yeah, if there's channels based on men looking good so I don't have to pay for anything, then, you know, great for them. It just doesn't work on certain women. And, you know, if if Pick Misha and Barbara the Builder want to pay for them, you know, that's great. I don't look down on those type of men. They just, they know the type of women that will pay. And so they don't really bother me at all because they're doing the same thing we're doing, except in reverse. I mean, um, if they know Pick Misha or Barbara the Builder will pay or help build with them, then why shouldn't they? You know, they're not going to approach someone who's high maintenance who expects them to pay for everything. So if they know that they can get their stuff paid for by certain types of women, why wouldn't they do it? I'm just saying, if you don't like paying for men, then don't be those types of women. There's nothing wrong with those type of men because when you're young. And if you're a 25-year-old dude, you're not going to be able to afford the same thing as a 50-year-old man or a 60-year-old man. You're not going to be able to take people on vacation every couple of months and take work off because, you know, you've, you've got to clock in and pay that child support wherever you've made the kids that whatever. You're going to be able to do that at 25 years old. So a lot of men don't have a choice if, if they want to live a better lifestyle than to go find a pygmisha or go find a barber the builder. But that doesn't mean you have to be her. That's it. <laughs> it's a game recognized game. Like you see one over there getting his pig Misha on, you getting your sugar daddy on. Don't be mad. I see no issues with it. 
Mm -hmm. You are teaching us to be smart and most importantly to be strategic. Mm -hmm. Sprinkle, he said she is from Brazil. Oh, okay, Fabiana. Sprinkle, sprinkle in Brazil. He said young guys will order a bottle and act surprised at the bill. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, you know, they think you're going to pitch in and be Barbara or Pete Bishu. He said a smart man would dig for gold, not dirt, if they were women. Most men with money understand they don't chant gold digger. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Women are wise and intuitive, but those type of men never grow up speaking from unfortunate experience. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, they're using their looks to attract certain types of women because they're not trying to be those types of men who pay for stuff. So they're more in their feminine anyway. So you don't want that. They're looking for a masculine woman. They're never going to be the masculine man that you want because they're in their feminine. So men who are more in their feminine and base their value on their looks, let them be. Allow them to be in their feminine if that's where they're most comfortable. Allow them to seek a masculine woman to take care of them or help them build or, you know, pay them bills or whatnot. Uh, they're in their feminine and that's where they feel most comfortable. So allow them to do what they do. Um, let them be who they are. I don't know. <laughs> are these overalls? These are overalls. There are these wide leg loose overalls. And I wore them with some cute like um, eyelet wedge slide-ins. And this cute shirt does not... <laughs> Um, I just had to run a couple of errands and that's it. I didn't really go anywhere. Um, you need to hype us up video, Shira. She was saying video. <laughs> mm -hmm. You love this vintage era I'm giving us? Yes. I've been, I've been like trying to look cute and vintage for the last couple of weeks. It's fun. I enjoy it. Especially with my hair length. It's easy to do the hairstyles. I'm just trying to let it grow out and things like that. <laughs> How to avoid being picked, Misha? You're scary and turning like that during your relationship. Standards, write them down and don't stray. I am paying all bills, ill boy. Like, not, no utilities. Write down this. No utilities. <laughs> no. And you, if you if you go out to eat with grown men, you do not contribute. Just make your rules and do not break them. That's it. It's that easy. Um, no to going into business with any man. If it's not all your money and business to keep, you don't need a loan. If they're not giving it to you as a gift, you don't want it. Um, no, down, no helping him build, no down payment, no nothing. You are the guest of honor, and once you don't feel like that anymore, it's time to find something else to do. Okay? That's it. <laughs> Laura, you crazy. You remember when I said that? <laughs> Y'all, they was they was mad. Like those besties were mad when I said that. Because they were bragging on their salary and they it will stop you. All right. <laughs> Why did I stop getting my coffin nails done? Because they went out of style, baby. Sprinkle, sprinkle. How do you deal with dusties that want your attention in public grocery stores? Work outside. Act like you can't hear. Get you some earbuds. So, man, we Okay. Be on the phone, even if it's a fake phone call. 
Uh huh. Yeah. I just found out I was pregnant. <laughs> That's how you get the dusty to leave you alone. Girl, I just found out I'm pregnant. <laughs> They'll be gone. All right. Mm. How do you deal with a dusty that wants your attention? Yeah. Be on a fake phone call, talk about you break. All right. And what if my that was one of my best roast lines? I know. I used to have a lot of trolls and I had to roast them right then and there and keep going. Um You said, do basic American style girls attract dusties or should we be classy, classic, and cultured? Uh, it just depends on where you are. Because in, like if you look if, if you look like a man can't afford you, most likely they will not approach. So um, just think about that. And that's the best advice I can give you. If if they look like an, they can afford you, they will approach. So however you need to look, that's how you need to look. And if you're looking classy and all that kind of stuff, hang out in places that people also look classy and that that's norm, normal. If you're looking classy in an environment where people aren't classy, you're going to stand out like a sore thumb. And you may not get approached because they don't think they can afford you. So... <laughs> Should we look expensive if we still on the dating market? You should look like you're not cheap. You know what I'm saying? You should look like you expect nice things and like you go on nice vacations and that you're happy with, you know, the lifestyle. But you shouldn't look like you have everything already because then they won't know how to impress you. So you just look like you want the lifestyle that you're, pursuing so just classic looks you know they can't tell if you have money or not but they can tell that you're not on the trendy side of things and on the, the street ratchet side of things that, that that you can be taken to nice classy places and not stand out like a sore thumb so that's probably what you were expecting you know what i mean mm -hmm. Can anyone in the chat see your comments? Yes, they can. <laughs> you go out in wealthy areas looking classy and the men don't approach. Why is that? Um, it depends on where you're going, how you look. Are you their type? <clears throat> and is the place that you're going, is it a place to talk to women, women socially? So are they close to your age? Are you looking for older men? It's, it's so many questions. You know, um, do you seem out of place? Are you comfortable in that environment? Sometimes people like to see you come in somewhere regularly before they're comfortable enough to approach you. Um, it just all depends. If you don't look like you belong there, if your confidence level isn't up enough to feel comfortable there, they may also pick up on that. So you might need to go in there a few times, get very comfortable, and then, you know, you may get more results. But it's, it's your comfort level and how you feel in the areas too, wherever you're going. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So just keep going. It, ta it takes practice, you know what I'm saying? Just keep going. I remember when I was younger, I used to go to the expensive places and hang out. It was awkward a little bit at first because, of course, sometimes I would go alone or with other people. Um, then I would always break off and go stand alone somewhere. But it was awkward at first. But then once I got used to the environment, got used to everything, I just went in there like no big deal. And it, things became very easy. Like, um, you just It's your comfort level and your confidence level. 
Just keep going. You'll, you'll, you'll see. You said you suggest going to high end events where everyone is networking. Mm -hmm. Do I frequent the same location? I would have a list of places that I would go and I would frequent them all. Maybe not on like not all the time, but like I would just go to certain places and until I got very comfortable there. Um, I would switch it up though. Like I would go here on Monday, here on Tuesday, here on Wednesday. Um, then next Monday, I will go to the same place that I went last Monday. I wouldn't go every day to the same place. I would go one day here, Tuesday here, Tuesday there, you know, and then maybe then the next week I would switch it up and change dates. Maybe go here Tuesday instead of Monday, you know, and as you get more comfortable with the environment and the place, then you don't look like you don't belong. And the, the staff recognizes you, the bartenders recognize you, you know, um, you're more chill and relaxed. You feel like, you know, you belong and people pick up on that. And so it's easier. Then people will start approaching you easier because you feel like you fit there. Mm -hmm. You said you watch my video on vintage loungewear. What about when it's cold? Um, they have ones that are made out of thicker materials. And y'all know I live in Texas. They don't get that cold. <laughs> um, but maybe try ones that are made out of like Thicker materials, maybe cotton or flannel. Um, <laughs> they have them old school, like terry cloth. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Or just thick cotton would be fine. Or just a thicker robe and still cute, uh, silky stuff underneath. You said, how can you keep a man hooked without sex? You want to stay celibate, but also want him to pay for my designer lifestyle. Um, then find one that can't, don't want to do it. Sprinkle, sprinkle. If you ain't trying to sleep with him, it don't matter if he can do it or not. So find somebody that don't, that can't do it. Find you an old man who can't take, you don't buy hire because he got a heart condition or whatever and be done. Period. Because some they can they if they don't sleep with you, they might want to sleep with someone else. I don't know how you'll feel about that. But get somebody that can't do nothing but got their money, and you might get lucky. Should you tell a man that you're waiting for marriage to become intimate? You want to run them off? Sprinkle sprinkle. <laughs> I'm waiting for marriage. <laughs> Girl, what what day is it? It's not really the fifties. <laughs> how do you meet old Ben in real life I told you you said all the oldest you've seen is 45 here y'all don't know how to do this y'all so young y'all don't even know how to meet old people this is crazy that's all we was looking for back in the day the bars and certain lounges that don't play a lot of loud music, higher end lounges and bars where they play maybe some jazz or some live music, um, lubies, the pharmacy and nice area, Denny's in the morning, Whole Foods in the morning, the golf club. Somebody says cigar lounge. I don't know how I feel about cigar lounge. If you know what you're doing over there. But if you meet them, they're great. You say YMCA gym? No. These are regular gyms. Remember, they have that money. You want to move back to Fort Lauderdale? You're a substitute teacher? Okay. You said all men, they got senior dating apps. <laughs> the Irish plugs with the 80s cover bands. Okay. Sometimes I'd be at karaoke trying to sing them old school, old school songs. All right. <laughs> mm. 
He said the men in NOLA haven't been very impressing. Okay. Cruises, nice grocery stores. Okay. Everything you know about dating, you taught me. I think I'm a, I'm a good path. Wonderful. You say you find your old husband in Boca Raton, Florida. Okay. Retirement community, Florida. All right. You said it was a different time and era. Mm -hmm. They hang out early. They don't really hang out late, late nights. So you got to get out like around happy hour or lunchtime or breakfast. <laughs> okay. You know, they can't see well at night to drive. <laughs> You know, they be in bed by 8.30. Y'all got to get out early. All right. I think happy hour is a really good place because they're on the way home from work or stopping in to meet people or whatever after work. Lunchtime at the nice restaurants at the bar area. A lot of people just go eat lunch there. We meet them there. Um, Medical center area, around the medical center, restaurants around the medical center, around the courtroom, you know, courthouses and stuff, maybe. You know, I just just go wherever. You're bound to run into them. Go lunchtime in the business um, section, medical center, courthouse area, whatever. Um. Okay, that's where you go. But you can't be like, if you're not if you're not ready to date older people, then don't do it because it's gonna look strange. You're gonna look weird and weirded out. But are you ready to get that money and stop working and just be free? Okay, <laughs> you'll you'll be fine. All right, but you really gotta be fed up. You have like I am done. There's no way I'm ever going back to being. Dating any type of dusty where I have to clock in ever again. I'm done. You just got to be done. <laughs> okay. Super done. Just period done. Like I'm done. That's when you know you got, you're going to get it. <laughs> yeah, I was done at 22. I was done. <laughs> it's couldn't work anymore for anybody else. Okay. Sometimes you need an environment change to go to the rich cities and communities. Okay. You find older men in the sauna at the gym. Mm -hmm. That's what I, I. Oh, that's a good one. I remember that. <laughs> I didn't go in because they were in there, but that you know. If you was looking, that's where you could go. Okay. <laughs> he said, you're single because you don't just date anyone. You don't date just anyone. <laughs> okay. Suit shops, men's department. Okay. You're tired of thugs trying to flirt with you while their gun is hanging out of their pocket and they speak broken words. Girl, I'm, I'm scared for you. <laughs> you said your ex was Larry Blackman of Cameo, the lead singer. So where do you go from there? My son is angry because he doesn't want us to want us so he's been running since 1984 and I told him he was the dad girl <laughs> you're right a book sprinkle sprinkle is that the dude that saying tastes like candy I don't know what he's saying girl sprinkle sprinkle 
found you a doctor who provides. Thank you, Shira. All I have to do now is look good. All right, then. Sparkle, sparkle. Brenda, what he saying? Who sang that candy song? Is that him? Um, you need to hit Boca twice a month at this point. Okay. Y'all are discussing places to hit in Florida? All right. You're too beautiful to these mediocre guys. Guess you are like me, Lauren. <laughs> anyway, I'm trying. I'm trying to find out who sang that song. I guess I'll look it up. Anyway, um, so y'all are all gonna go hang out at the retirement communities in Florida, the bars near the older. Where older people hang out. I wish y'all the best of luck. <laughs> he said. Oh, he do sing candy? Okay, see, I knew I was right. How long should you work before you actually start giving out, going out and look for these men? How can you live the lifestyle when you don't have it yet? They're supposed to pay for it. Um, you just look good and hang around the nice areas. Sooner or later, you're going to meet somebody and they're going to change your whole world. <laughs> That's just how it goes. You know? After you get off work, have your little bag of clothes to change into. You don't even, you know, it, it, you got to make it a priority to get out and be seen. So if you work and stuff, have, have an outfit you can throw on after work, go to happy hour until you meet somebody. Keep going. Every day if you can. If you can't stay long, don't stay too long, but stay as long as you can. But, you know, the more you get out, the more you're seen, the easier it is to meet people. Mm -hmm. How to stop getting irrationally angry when a below average man approaches? Um, I don't know if you're talking about looks or money, but I would definitely start off with financial wants and needs in the conversation. Either they'll get rid of themselves or you will have some extra money in your pocket. Either way, you're solving the issue. Okay. So if they're below average, you say, oh, no, I think I need new tires this week. And I don't know what I'm going to do and how to get them. They're going to exit themselves or they are going to offer to help you. Either way, you're going to get some money or left alone. So. That's all I do. Just see, look at it as, as a hit or miss opportunity for to getting some money. That's it. <laughs> and you're not trying to impress them, so you're not don't care if you scare them off, but just in case you could get something. That way you won't be upset, but you just see it as an opportunity instead. Mm-hmm. You start getting fierce because he have no money and no looks. <laughs> oh. Then act like you don't hear them. That's what I do. You need sunglasses and earbuds, baby. No, don't make eye contact and be always be on the phone. Even if you have to just start talking to yourself. Uh oh, sparkle, sparkle, H Town, hey. You 
you said sun but sun if, if you're in a dusty area that's what you need to have on okay they will stop yep look expensive they will stop Atlanta is trick city to come down here if you can't find one in Miami okay <laughs> if y'all say so freestyling in Dallas is do not hang out in the local communities because most men are with the wives okay y'all are helping each other out I see Y'all got to go to strategic places sometimes. It's not all about the clubs or the lounge. Like sometimes you just got to go to a strategic place in a weird time. You might run into someone that's no one else around. and They don't have anyone else to talk to but you. I still, you know, sometimes you got to be strategic. Like... <laughs> To, yeah, don't always think about going out at night to bars and clubs. Find other alternative places. It'll be fun. All right, y'all, get ready to go. I'll see y'all later. Y'all have a good evening, and thank y'all for everyone who donated. Everyone who hit the like button, y'all hit it again. Click, click. If y'all haven't hit the like button, hit it now. If y'all are new, subscribe. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the little bell thing so you can get notified when I pop up and go live <laughs> next time I haven't been doing as many vlogs as I used to but I'm going to try to get back into doing a couple of vlogs maybe once a month who knows but I will definitely be trying if not then I hope y'all catch up on the old vlogs if y'all haven't been watching them so I will see y'all on the next one. Okay. Uh oh, de uh oh, the desert, Desiree, sprinkle, sprinkle. I didn't want to leave without saying thanks. I appreciate that. Bye.